div wrapped within jQuery. The way we do that is we use a JavaScript method called call. And this means we are going to call the close function right here. And within here, what are we going to use to represent this? Well, that's easy. We want to use contact form .container. And that's all there is to it. Now, close is immediately called. And within it, this is going to refer to the contact div. All right, let's try this out. See if we made any mistakes. I'm going to open up Chrome Developer Tools, click on Contact Me, and now you can see in the top right corner, we have this close button. Now you'll see that we have a little pointer finger there. If we scroll back to the top, you can see that I've styled this just a bit. So by default, without any styling, the close button is going to look like that. But then we simply position it absolutely, and we put it in the top right corner, and then we set the cursor to pointer so that the user knows they can click on it. Now let's see what happens when I click on it. Click, and now it hides. Pretty easy. Click, hide. So now that we have the basic functionality in place, we can expand this a good bit to provide a little more effect so it feels like it's sliding down. Within our object, I'm going to add a new object within it, and we're going to call this config. And this is where we can set some base settings. And then later, we'll allow the user to override those settings. So we'll say the base effect, and this will be how it's hidden and displayed. I'm going to use slide toggle. So with jQuery, if something is hidden and you want to display it by sliding it down, you would use a method called slide down. And if you want to hide it using a slide, you would use slide up. And the same thing for fading, fade in, fade out. Now, if you want to use the same kind of toggle functionality that we know we can achieve with show and hide, you have the same thing slide toggle, and then you also have fade toggle. And that means if the element is hidden, fade it in. But if the element is displayed, then fade it out. That's all toggle means. So it's simply a helper method. So within here, I'm going to set the default effect to slide toggle. Now, rather than using show, we're going to use our effect. So rather than contactform.container.show, we are going to reference slide toggle. And we can reference that by using the array notation. So you may not know that when you have an object, for example, contact form container, you can reference that by doing contact form dot container. We know that, but you can also reference it by doing contact form container. It's the exact same syntax. So this makes it really helpful when we don't exactly know what the name is. We can simply reference a variable. So let's put that into effect right here. Rather than calling the show method, we know that we essentially want to call slide toggle, but in order to do so, we want to reference whatever is stored here. So instead, I'm going to reference contact form dot config dot effect. And this will essentially be translated to slide toggle. Now we've referenced it, we simply need to call the method. So I'm going to use an opening and closing parentheses, and we'll set a default for now of 500 milliseconds. And now that means it's going to slide toggle over the course of 500 milliseconds. And we'll get rid of these surrounding quotes. All right, let's try this out. Refresh, click contact me. And now can you see that it's sliding down like so? But if I click on the X, once again, we're still using the hide method, not the slide up or slide toggle. So right here, we can say once again, rather than the hide method, we're going to use brackets, contact form, dot config, dot effect over the course of 500 milliseconds. Once again, click contact me, it slides down. I click on the X and it slides up. It's as easy as that. The next step is let's provide some flexibility so that when we call the init method, we can specify if we want a slide toggle or a fade toggle. So when the user calls the init method, they want to be able to pass an object and they want to say the effect rather than the default of slide toggle, I want to be fade toggle. And I want the speed or how long it takes. I want that to be really long. This is too long to ever do in your projects, but it's helpful for our demo to see that it's working. So now when the init method is called, this config object will be passed and config will be equal to this. Now we can use a helpful method that's part of jQuery core where we can say jQuery.extend. And this is pretty neat. What this allows us to do is apply a default object. And we've already created that right here. So we are going to extend this.config. And I want to say, here's my object. 
Next, I want to take whatever the user passed within their own object, and that's going to override anything that I have, like so. So that means if we have effect right here, well, the user overrided that. So I want to replace this object, and now effect should be equal to fade toggle. On the other hand, if we have speed 500, and the user never passes his own speed, then speed will remain at 500 because the user did not override it within their object. So it's very simple. This is our target object. Anything right here will override our default object. It's fairly simple. So I'm going to backtrack and we have 2000. We have our default effect that's being overridden right here. And now let's see if it works. Refresh, click on contact me. And now you see as easy as that, we've provided configuration options where it fades instead of slides. And because we reference the effects in every area by referring to config.effect, we don't have to update that in all of these different methods. It'll simply work because they're all referring to the same effect style. Now, the last thing we need to do is speed. We do want to make sure that we don't hard code the speed in for our demo at least. It's very possible in your projects. You don't need this level of control, but if you're building plugins in the future, you might want to do that. So now we can add speed and I'm going to set the speed to half a second or 500 milliseconds. And then we simply replace it in each location. Contact form, config, speed. I'll copy that, paste it in right there, and we're good to go. So now when I click on contact me, that's going to fade in over the course of two seconds. Or if we elect to not override the default effect, then it will slide down over the course of two seconds. As you can see right there. Good. Now, of course, you would never want to do an effect that slow. I usually stick with around 300 milliseconds. One more time, click it, and that's pretty snappy. Now, at this point, our effect is done. We just want to do a little bit of cleanup. Right here in the show method, you can see that gets a little bit difficult to read because we are referring to contactform.container, contactform.config. So why don't we improve performance a tiny, tiny bit and also make it more readable for us? We'll create some variables. We'll create one called CF for contact form. Next, a variable called container, and that's going to refer to contactform.container. Or remember that refers to the div with an ID of contact. And then one more, once again, this is mostly for our convenience, config. And that will be equal to cf.config. Now we can clean things up a bit. I'll get rid of this and refer to container, then get rid of this and refer to config. And the same thing right here. And up here, we can replace that with container. That looks good to me. And look how much easier that is to read. One more time, try it to make sure it's working. Good. And now the final step is when this show method is called, we need to keep in mind that it's possible that the user could click on this button even when the form is displaying. In this case, we've lucked out and the form is covering it up, but it's very possible in your project that will not be the case. So we wanna be sure that before we do anything, we wanna to check to see, is that form already displaying? If so, we don't need to do anything. And we can do that really easily. We'll say if container, dot is, and this is a new method, and this allows us to see if maybe a specific element has an ID of div. So you could say if container dot is div, or you could say if container dot is container. It's a really helpful method. In this case, we want to say if the container is hidden, and that essentially means display none. So if the container is not currently displayed, it has a display of none. In that case, good. We do want to show it, and we do want to add the close button. Refresh, click on it, it's still working, but now we've added a little bit more protection where we're not executing these functions if we don't need to. And now we have one more thing to do before we finish this lesson. If I reload the page and I click contact me and I close it, that all seems to work. And even if I do it again, that seems to work. But come down here, take a look at the contact div, and now you can see every time we click that button, we are adding a new close span. And the reason why it's doing that is because we've told it to. So we need a way to say, if there is not already a span, then add one. But if there already is a close button, we don't need to do it again, because if we do, we're going to end up creating all of these extra elements, and that's not good. So an easy way to handle this is right at the top right here, we'll say, if this dot find a span with a class of close, 
Remember, this refers to the contact div. So we are saying right here, if you can find a span with a class of close within this div, then we don't need to add another one. So in that case, simply get out of here, return from this function, and return again means nothing after it's going to run. We're done with the function, so we're going to turn around and return. But now it won't be enough to simply look for that span because jQuery will still return something. We simply want to see if the return object has a length. And if it does, that means something was actually returned. So I'm gonna look for length. Another way you could do this would be that. And that means get the first item from the array. But we'll stick with length. And now let's try it, refresh, contact. And let's make sure, I'm gonna click and inspect that. And when I close it, if we did everything right, we're only creating one. One more time. And now you can see at most, we only ever have one span. Because the first time this runs, we say, is there a span with a class of close? Nope, all right, well, let's go ahead and create one. But the next time it's called when that button is pressed, this runs, is there a length? Yes, there is. In that case, we're done, so let's return from this function and simply toggle the display. Okay, and we did quite a bit in this lesson. This is easily the most complicated lesson we've done so far. So if that was a little difficult to understand, absolutely go back and watch it again. But if you were able to follow along, we did a lot of cool stuff today. You learned about how to use the call method, which is really cool to specify what this represents. You learned how to provide some configuration options using jQuery.extend. And you also learned how to provide a little bit more structure for your projects by using an object to contain all of your various methods. And then finally, we also reviewed how you might want to be careful about constantly using anonymous functions as your callbacks, because really Really easily you can end up with massively indented code once you have four callback functions within each other and that's way too difficult to maintain. So if you have any questions and if you are a Touch Plus Premium member, you can go to touchplus.com slash forums. Otherwise, I am Jeffrey underscore Way on Twitter and feel free to ask any questions that you might have. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.